Greetings, YouTube. I own a lot of flashlights. I mean, a, a lot of flashlights. Not as many knives as I own, but I own way too many flashlights. Part of it is because I'm fascinated by them, um, particularly if they are of the LED variety. Though I do have some classic incandescent flashlights, some of them as old as like the 1930s, I think. Like the oldest one, I think, is the 1930s. I don't think I have any from the 20s. Um, and one of the things I love about LEDs is they're bright, they're long-lasting, they're very efficient energy-wise, um, and they're durable, and, be, and they become in many different varieties of sizes and shapes and battery types. And one of the things I'm not a big fan of, though, are rechargeable flashlights. And here's my reasoning. A flashlight is used when you don't have access to lights. Okay, so you need to get light into a spot where you are, where there is no light. And I use my flashlight I, the one I carry, which is a th through night archer, I think is what I'm carrying in my in my my belt pouch. I use it all the time. I tell you when I'm like out bargain hunting, because a lot of the time I'm in barns or in basements in estate sales or poking around in uh, dimly lit uh, antique or thrift shops. So if I need a light in the spot, I got it right there. So you need portable light, hence the beautiful thing about a flashlight. Um, this is a Bushnell um, variety. Um, and if you run out, if your flashlight runs out of power, you are probably not going to be anywhere near a source of steady electricity to recharge it. So if you are carrying a recharging flashlight and your flashlight dies, how do you recharge it? Not to mention you're going to make sure need to make sure that it stays charged, which is checking it occasionally. Um, whereas my the night the flashlight I carry in my belt pouch, which is another two D uh, two double A model like this, very similar to this one, um, is got two batteries in there which I can pop out and pop in, and the ones I carry in there are lithium batteries. So they're not going to last longer as, really as far as the power usage is concerned, but they're really good at maintaining their charge when you're not using them. And so it means that I know that when I go to grab that flashlight, it is going to produce some kind of light for years to come. Uh, and of course, the beautiful thing about that particular model at the low setting, like the candle power setting, it'll run for like 600 hours on two set of batteries. It's awesome. Um, but in a case of, of an emergency, when there is no light, you lose the light, your tire block is out or your city's out, um, you know, a tree has fallen and cut down the, the power lines to your house, you need power. And you may be using your flashlight, and you may only have a couple of them in your home. So you want flashlights that have a battery type that is ubiquitous, which is one of the reasons I love AA battery flashlights, because they are so easily found i mean if this dies on me and i have no other flashlight i can go into my living room and scrounge double a batteries out of remotes to get this flashlight working again obviously i'm not going to need the remote if i have no power not to mention i actually have batteries over here in storage in toolbox batteries but um i keep batteries in the house just in case but uh Partly because I'm always buying and testing the flashlight. But this uses AA batteries, which I think is the best use, best type for a household. General household usage, I think AA's are the absolute best option. Um, triple A's, which is, this is a, a Ryobi flashlight. This uses a battery carrier. And a battery carrier is a less efficient design in my book than just straight battery usage like the Bushnell has because the battery carrier is just one more thing that can break. The more parts something has, the more parts can break. But this uses triple A's, not quite as ubiquitous as double A's, but still really darn common. So pop those out, easy to replace. And again, you can often find triple A's uh, in toys and remotes in your house. Uh, so Again, in, in, in those circumstances, toys and remotes are less important than having light. But you can also find uh, 9 volts, which are also very common. Don't take them out of your smoke alarms, folks. 
but they're also very common. And these thing in this particular flashlight has been sitting here on my desk. It's got two settings. Middle one is just the two. Right there, you see it. And then it's all six. And this has been sitting on my desk for years. I've had this particular um, particular battery sitting here, I think it's at least a decade, and it's still producing light. Um, I find the design wonderfully simple. It's like just click the, click the flashlight onto the battery itself. It's a really cool design. Um, and uh, again, 9 volts, very common if you are a homeowner or even apartment dweller you're probably going to have nine volts just so you when your smoke alarm start beeping at you saying it needs a battery you can replace it and shut it up so it's very common you're going to have nine volts but none of this is really going to happen in the event you have a rechargeable flashlight now there's the possibility of taking power out of say a power bank if you've got one or a laptop you can maybe drain power out of a laptop into a flashlight for an emergency use that's not always going to be accessible to you. That's why I like battery flashlights. Now, and, and if I'm in the field, in a sense, outside my house, and my battery dies, I can walk into any store, any store, and buy AA batteries. Any, any, any gas station, convenience store, drug store, department store, hardware store, it's going to have AA batteries. Bingo, I'm ready to go. May not have lithiums, okay, but temporarily, if I need that power right then, I can get it. I'm just not a fan of the whole rechargeable flashlight concept. I understand it's ecologically superior because you're not putting batteries into the waste stream. I get that. I respect that. But when it comes to something that your life can depend on, I want it to work and I want it to be able to be supported so I can get it to work. And to me, a better method for that is conventional batteries. Um, even rechargeable batteries, you, again, you, you're pushing back the problem because I you can buy you can buy rechargeable AA batteries, uh, AAA batteries. I own some. Uh, I used to have a camera that used them. And, uh, but you just remove the problem one step further. Sure, you have them charged then, but eventually they're going to die. And if your flashlight will only use rechargeables, and if you don't have any more, you're stuck. Well, this is going to be easily replaced. Again, double A's are you, the most ubiquitous battery type there is. Um, and I happen to really love the simplicity of the design. I mean, this is two batteries. It's a good size, it's not too big. Um, this is a, this is a good, this is a decent flashlight. It's got white, red, uh, purple, or ultraviolet kind of thing, and then back off again. Nice design. And this is just a simple, plain white, high low, blinky blinky blinky. And again, this one, high low, very simple. So let's talk about battery types. Do you like rechargeable flashlights? Have you ever encountered the problems I am describing? Um, do you agree that maybe my, my position has some merit or do you think I'm being a little paranoid as far as about needing to keep your battery, your flashlight going even in under, you know, adverse circumstances. And that's the reason I'd like to depend on batteries as opposed to rechargeable flashlights. Um, so let's actually have a talk about gear.